Have you ever heard the story of a woman so beautiful, so enchanting, so cunning, that she single-handedly altered the course of the world's greatest empire? A true tale of love, lust and treachery that competes with even the greatest works of fiction. Some say she was divine, a strong leader beloved by her people, whilst others dismiss her as simply a pawn in the games of more powerful men. I will let you make up your own mind as we explore together the enthralling legend of Cleopatra, Queen of the Nile. The focus of our story today is perhaps the most famous woman to have ever lived. Such is her influence on the world that her name is as famous 2,000 years after her death than any current celebrity you may be able to think of. This despite the fact she lived for only a short 39 years. But whilst her name may be remembered, the details of her truly remarkable life are perhaps less well known, a tragedy that we are going to rectify together right now. Cleopatra was born into Egyptian royalty, the daughter of Ptolemy XII, who died when she was only 18 years old. As custom dictated, the throne was passed to Cleopatra and her 10-year-old brother, Ptolemy XIII, to rule together. Imagine yourself at 18 years old, being given responsibility for the lives of an entire population. The pressure, the fear you would experience. But Cleopatra was undaunted, perhaps instilled with an innate belief that she was born to rule. And if the enormity of this situation wasn't enough on its own, internal family friction was immediate as jealousy and ambition looked to pounce on the opportunity. The prospect of so much power, creating a huge rift between the siblings. Supporters of both sides declared their right to rule alone, and in situations such as this, conflict is inevitable. Forces were assembled and the great city of Alexandria became the front line in the war for supremacy between brother and sister. Cleopatra was forced to temporarily flee to Syria, but was able to raise an army of mercenaries and return to continue the fight. It was at this moment, however, amidst the raging battle for dominance and control, that an unforeseen twist of fate transpired that would not only forever change the life of Cleopatra, but the fate of Egypt itself. From across the sea, a man appeared, running and scared, seeking refuge. This was not just any man, however, but the legendary Roman general Pompey himself. Following a string of defeats at the hands of Julius Caesar in Rome's own ongoing civil war, Pompey had fled to Egypt, seeking a safe haven to rebuild his forces. But rather than being met with friendship and support as he had expected, Cleopatra's estranged brother Ptolemy instead had Pompey killed in the hope that he would gain the favour of Caesar by removing his great nemesis. But rarely are things that simple, and Caesar was certainly not a man that was easy to predict. Upon his arrival in Egypt and the presentation of Pompey's severed head, rather than gratitude, the emperor was outraged by the murder of a Roman senator at the hands of a foreigner. He immediately demanded a ceasefire in the war between Cleopatra and her brother, eager to bring Egypt back in line. But Ptolemy had control of the palace and set about trying to convince Caesar to grant him sole rule over Egypt, whilst using his forces to keep his sister from getting to the emperor. But our young protagonist was not to be so easily contained demonstrating both her bravery and cunning in equal measure. She managed to sneak into the palace in the dead of night, disguised and unseen, and make her way to the bedchamber of Caesar. It is hard to imagine what he must have thought, this all-powerful man, how his heart must have raced 
at the sudden appearance of this glorious young queen, emerging from the shadows, a hypnotic vision of divinity come to steal his devotion. By the morning, Ptolemy awoke to find his sister miraculously at Caesar's side, the full support of Rome pledged toward ending the civil war. Ptolemy, still only a 13-year-old boy, flew into a rage and attempted to incite a riot in Alexandria against Caesar and Cleopatra. His followers rallied and raged with him, forcing Caesar and the small contingent of soldiers he had brought to Egypt to barricade themselves in the palace, Cleopatra by his side. All hope looked lost but they managed to hold out long enough for reinforcements from Rome to arrive, and the scales of power were tipped suddenly in the opposite direction. Ptolemy and his army retreated to the Nile, but were pursued by Caesar and eventually defeated, the would-be boy king drowning in the river as he attempted to flee. Caesar returned to Alexandria and declared Cleopatra the ruler of Egypt, settling to stay in the country for several months. During this time, Cleopatra and Caesar grew close and a son was born, Caesarian or Little Caesar. Whether their love was real, who can say? The Egyptian queen was as intelligent as she was beautiful, and the benefits of a relationship with the leader of Rome were clear to all. Shortly after Caesar's return to Rome, Cleopatra travelled to join him. Not recognised officially, given the presence of Caesar's wife, but unofficially as his mistress, she resided in the city for several months. That is, until the fateful day now known as the Ides of March, and the assassination of Caesar at the hands of his friends and allies. Her life suddenly thrown once more into turmoil, this still young queen was forced to flee Rome and retreat back to Egypt, fear and uncertainty gripping her as the ripples from Caesar's death surged out far and wide across the empire. A further civil war broke out in Rome. The killers of Caesar against his closest ally and legal heir, Mark Antony and Octavian. Whilst Cleopatra did not know it at the time, these two men would play pivotal roles in the rest of her life, albeit for very different reasons. Whilst Cleopatra solidified her rule in Egypt, securing the life of her son and becoming a beloved queen, Antony and Octavian were victorious in defeating Caesar's assassins and took control of Rome for themselves. With victory secured, Antony summoned Cleopatra to a meeting intent on questioning why she had not given support to his troops in the civil war. But what occurred was something entirely different. On that day, they fell deeply and intensely in love. It is said that Cleopatra knew how to make an entrance, arriving in an elaborate ship dressed in the robes of the Egyptian goddess Isis, dazzling the Roman, who had no doubt heard stories of her magnetism that were somehow surpassed in reality. He was struck by her intelligence as well as her beauty, captivated by her as if he were a young boy again. Whilst her love for Caesar was uncertain, it was not so with Mark Antony. Their passion burning bright for all to see. On that day, everything changed, as the love of two people would shift the course of history and dictate the fate of an empire. Antony soon travelled to Egypt, where he would eventually marry Cleopatra, producing three children together. Egypt flourished under her rule, becoming a wealthy and prosperous nation, and her popularity soared with Antony by her side. But this put a great strain on Antony's relationship with Octavian, the official heir of Caesar and ruler of the western half of the empire. Antony was portrayed by Octavian as a traitor, as succumbing to the temptations and trickeries of an evil foreign queen and forgoing his homeland of Rome. Eventually tensions escalated, and when Antony attempted to declare Caesarion as Caesar's rightful heir instead of Octavian, 
they reached the point of no return and war was officially declared. Antony had risked everything for Cleopatra, his infatuation clear for all to see. Unfortunately for him, it would prove to be his undoing. As our story reaches its tragic climax, consider for a moment the achievements of this young Egyptian queen. Thrust into power as a teenager, forced to fight her own people, her own family, to cling on to the rule that was rightfully hers. Risking everything to form a relationship with the most powerful man in the world, only to find herself thrown back into chaos by his assassination. Surviving yet again, and prospering even, worshipped by her people as a great and divine leader. And despite it all, finding love, a deep and powerful love that made it all seem worthwhile. A short war followed in which our young queen herself commanded a fleet of ships, but unfortunately for this now famous couple, Octavia was successful in defeating their combined forces. Split up during the war, Antony received word that Cleopatra had taken her own life. Distraught, he reached for his sword and stabbed himself in the stomach, uttering the words, I am not paid to be bereft of you, for at once I will be where you are. He did not die straight away, however, and was taken to Alexandria, where the still very much alive Cleopatra was waiting but it was too late to save him. And she broke down in anguish as he took his last breath in her presence. With everything lost, she attempted to burn herself with her treasures and join her love, but was denied by the forces of Octavia as they took control of the city. She was captured and prepared for transport to Rome. In her final act of strength and defiance, Determined to not be paraded through the streets in triumph, she managed to escape and found a way to take her own life, joining Antony in their final resting place. She was buried alongside him in a grave that to this day has never been discovered. A tragic end to a remarkable life, but one perhaps befitting the drama and theatre of her existence. Thus ends the story of Cleopatra, Queen of the Nile. Remembered for her beauty, but defined by her greatness. Quite possibly the most famous woman to have ever lived. Her story will continue to be told for many years to come. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, it would be great if you could give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember to make sure you hit the bell when you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on the story, or let me know any other great stories you would like to see told in future videos. Thanks again for watching.